Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to explore a fascinating aspect of behavioral psychology, conditioned motivating operations, or CAMOs. These concepts might sound complex, but they're incredibly relevant to understanding our own behaviors and those around us. Let's dive in and demystify CAMOs together. First off, what exactly are CAMOs? In simple terms, they're factors that change how much we like or want something. But here's the catch CAMOs operate based on our learning and experiences. Unlike our basic needs that are instinctual, like hunger or thirst, CAMOs develop as we interact with the world around us. So how do CAMOs work? They're rooted in our learning history. Imagine you've learned that studying with a particular type of music helps you concentrate better. Over time, just hearing that music makes you feel more focused and ready to study. This is because your past positive experiences, learning history with studying, and that music have changed how you react to the music itself. The music has become a CMO, making the act of studying more appealing to you. Changing desires CMOs can make us want things more or less at different times, depending on our past experiences. For example, if you've had fun playing a new video game with friends, you might start wanting to play more often when you're reminded of those good times. Influencing behavior because CMOs can make us want things more or less. They also change how often we do certain things. If a student learns that they get to play a game after completing their homework, the homework might suddenly seem less daunting. The prospect of playing the game shaped by positive past experiences motivates the student to do their homework more diligently or quickly than they might otherwise. Now, let's contrast CAMOs with UAMOs. Unlike UAMOs, which are about basic needs like hunger or thirst, that don't require learning to influence our behavior. CAMOs rely entirely on our experiences. For example, hunger automatically makes food more appealing without us needing to learn that connection. In contrast, a CMO might make a specific type of food more appealing because we've learned it's associated with good times or rewards. CMOs come in three main flavors CMOS or surrogate, which gets its motivating power from being paired with another motivator CMOR or reflexive, which is about avoiding bad outcomes or losing good ones and CMOT or transitive which makes us see something as valuable because it helps us get what we want. First of all, CMOS is like a stand-in for another motivating operation. It gets its power from being paired with another AMO and then starts to work just like that original AMO. Here is example. Imagine you always drink a particular brand of soda with your pizza. Just seeing an ad for that soda can make you crave pizza because you've associated the two together. The soda at CMOS now has the power to make you want pizza, just like the smell of pizza would. Next, a CMOR relates to situations that signal something bad might happen, or something good might end, making us want to avoid the bad thing or keep the good thing going. Example, think about hearing your alarm clock in the morning. The sound CMOR signals you need to get up to avoid being late. The relief you feel turning it off is reinforcing because, you've avoided the negative outcome being late. Lastly, a CMOT makes something more valuable because it's needed to get something else we want. It's like needing a key to open a treasure chest. Easy example if you're putting together a model airplane and realize you're missing a crucial piece. That piece becomes incredibly important CMOT. Its value increases because you need it to finish the model, something you're motivated to do. Let's look at a CMOT example. In a classroom setting, if a teacher holds back a necessary piece of a puzzle that a student is working on, the missing piece becomes much more valuable. This situation with holding the piece acts as a CMOT, making the student more likely to ask for it. This technique helps in teaching students to communicate their needs. What about CMOR? If a therapist wants to decrease a child's undesirable behavior, they might introduce a signal CMOR that precedes a timeout for that behavior. The child learns to associate the signal with the upcoming timeout and is motivated to avoid the behavior that leads to the timeout. For a CMOS example, 
If someone has had positive social interactions at a coffee shop, just seeing a picture of that coffee shop can evoke feelings of happiness and the desire to visit CMOS, even if they're not physically there. This is because the coffee shop image has been paired with positive social experiences. Let's practice with some mock exams. Mock exam 1. After weeks of studying in the library where it's always quiet, Mia starts to feel more focused and ready to study as soon as she enters the library, even before she opens her books. Which one is correct? 1. The library's quietness acts as a CMOT, making studying more valuable. 2. The library environment serves as a CMOS, having acquired the value of quiet study sessions. 3. Entering the library is an ISD, signaling that focused study behavior will be reinforced. 4. The library's quietness is a UMO, inherently reinforcing the study behavior. Correct answer is 2. The library environment serves as a CMOS, having acquired the value of quiet study sessions. Let me explain. The library's quiet environment becomes a CMOS through association with focused studying. It's not a CMOT because the quietness isn't needed to access another reinforcer. It directly influences Ma's readiness to study. It's not an SD in this context because it doesn't signal the availability of a specific reinforcement for a specific behavior. Nor is it a UAMO because its effect is learned, not innate. Mock exam 2. Every time Leo hears the sound of an opening soda can, he immediately feels thirsty. Even if he wasn't thinking about drinking anything before. Which one is correct? 1. The sound of the soda can acts as CMOS, having been paired with thirst quenching. 2. Hearing the soda can is a CMOT, because it makes Leo need a drink to quench his thirst. 3. The sound is an SD, indicating that drinking behavior will be positively reinforced. The soda can sound is a UMO, inherently making Leo thirsty. 4. The soda can sound is a UMO, inherently making Leo thirsty. Correct answer is 1. The sound of the soda can acts as a CMOS, having been paired with thirst quenching. Let me explain. The sound of the soda can becomes a CMOS through its association with drinking and satisfying thirst. Not because it inherently makes Liu thirsty ruling out UMO, or because it signals that drinking is now available which would be an SD. It's not a CMOT because the sound doesn't make something else valuable as a means to an end. Mock exam 3. Julie feels anxious whenever she sees dark clouds. As it reminds her of the need to carry an umbrella to avoid getting wet, something she dislikes. Which one is correct? 1. Dark clouds are a CMOR, signaling a worsening condition getting wet without an umbrella. 2. The sight of dark clouds is an ISD, indicating that carrying an umbrella will be reinforced. 3. Dark clouds serve as a CMOT making the carrying of an umbrella more valuable. 4. Seeing dark clouds is a CMOS due to their pairing with rain. Correct answer is 1. Dark clouds are a CMOR signaling a worsening condition getting wet without an umbrella. Let me explain. Dark clouds act as a CMOR because they indicate a potential worsening condition rain that Julie wants to avoid, thereby making the action of carrying an umbrella. More appealing as a means to avoid getting wet. It's not an SD because the clouds themselves don't signal reinforcement for a specific behavior. They signal the need to avoid an aversive outcome. Mock exam 4. After getting a reward for cleaning his room, Sam starts cleaning it more often. Especially when he sees his parents looking unhappy with the mess. What is correct statement? 1. Parents' unhappy looks act as a CMOR, motivating Sam to clean to avoid disapproval. 2. The sight of his parents' frowning is a CMOR, making the act of cleaning valuable. 3. His parents' expressions serve as an SD, signaling that cleaning will be reinforced. 4. The unhappy expressions are a CMOS, 
having been paired with the need to clean. Correct answer is 1. Parents unhappy looks act as a C-M-O-R, motivating Sam to clean to avoid disapproval. Let's see. The parents unhappy looks function as a C-M-O-R because they signal a potential worsening condition, receiving disapproval or other negative consequences, which Sam wants to avoid by cleaning his room. It's not a C-M-O to since the looks don't make another action valuable as a means to an end. Nor are they an SD in this scenario, because they don't signal the immediate availability of reinforcement for a specific behavior. Mock Exam 5. Every time Dana finishes a difficult workout, she rewards herself with a smoothie, making her look forward to her workouts even on days she feels less motivated. Which one is correct statement? 1. The reward of a smoothie acts as a CMOT, making the workout itself more valuable. 2. Looking forward to the workout is a CMOS, due to its association with the smoothie. 3. Finishing the workout serves as an ESD, signaling that smoothie reinforcement is available. 4. The anticipation of the smoothie is a UMO, inherently reinforcing the workout behavior. Correct answer is 1. The reward of a smoothie acts as a CMOT, making the workout itself more valuable. Let me explain. The smoothie functions as a CMOT because it makes completing the workout, the action needed to get the smoothie more valuable, especially on days when Dana's motivation is low. It's not a CMOS because the smoothie doesn't stand in for another motivating operation. It directly increases the value of the workout. It's not an SD in this context, because the workout completion itself doesn't signal the availability of reinforcement it's the condition, under which Dana allows herself the smoothie. Mock XM6. Tom starts feeling hungry every time he passes by a bakery in the morning on his way to work, even if he had breakfast. Which one is correct statement? 1. The bakery's smell acts as a CMOS, being paired with the sensation of hunger. 2. Passing the bakery serves as a CMOT, making the idea of eating more appealing. 3. The smell of the bakery is an ISD, indicating that food is available. 4. Morning hunger is a UMO, naturally triggered by the bakery. Correct answer is 1. The bakery's smell acts as a CMOS, being paired with the sensation of hunger. Let me explain. The smell of the bakery becomes a CMOS through its association with eating and hunger. It's not a CMOT because the bakery's smell doesn't make something else valuable. As a means to an end it directly alters the value of eating. It's not an SD in this scenario. Because the smell itself doesn't signal the immediate availability of reinforcement for a specific behavior. Instead, it triggers a learned response feeling hungry. UMO is incorrect because the hunger Tom feels is not a natural, unlearned response to the bakery's smell but rather a conditioned response. That's all today. I hope you understand better about conditioned motivating operation. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Have a good day. Thank you.